The Boston Red Sox continue to push the city to return Yawkey Way to its original name, Jersey Street. Sox owner John Henry wants to get rid of an association with former owner Tom Yawkey, who is said to have been a racist. And Henry is getting plenty of help from the editorial pages of the Boston Globe, which he also owns. The movement to change the name of Yawkey Way picked up steam after Red Sox owner John Henry weighed in. But others have been calling for a name change for years. I want to say that I feel strongly and have for some time that Yawkey Way needs to be renamed. To make his case, Boston Globe columnist Adrian Walker points to the fact that the Red Sox were the last team to integrate, something others in the media also note. Under his ownership, the Red Sox were the last team to integrate. The Red Sox team was the last to integrate players. The Red Sox, under former owner Tom Yawkey, was the last to do so. But the Yawkey Foundation says there is no evidence that Tom Yawkey himself was racist. And Foundation board member Reverend Ray Hammond says while the team was the last to integrate, it was not for lack of trying. The Red Sox made strong, substantial offers to other teams to acquire such star black players as Larry Doby, Charlie Neal and Bill Greeson, but they were rebuffed. Beat the Press has learned the Yawkey Foundation's Ray Hammond tried to place an op-ed in the Globe arguing against the name change, but was told the language was too similar to a full-page ad the Foundation ran in December. Meanwhile, advocates for a name change continue to pepper the opinion and editorial pages. No surprise in opinion, John Henry shares. So just to be clear, I called the Boston Globe uh, editorial pages to ask them if anybody had you know, tried to print, you know, whether, what, why they didn't print the thing from uh, um, Reverend Hammond, and they had no comment on that. But to also be clear, Jeff Jacoby, in the, he's a regular columnist there, did uh, do an opinion piece about why it shouldn't be named. But, but Adrian Walker has sort of been the lead, lead voice on this. I mean, my, my point has been that it feels like the editorial and the opinion pages can't really veer too far off of what John Henry wants because he both owns the Red Sox and the Boston Globe, and it puts everybody in kind of a sticky place. I mean, it's one thing to have an outside voice like John Henry, and I, I, I mean um, uh, Reverend Hammond, but I, so, so I give um, Jeff Jacoby some credit for actually bucking. And, and actually, Jeff had some, some, some thoughtful points, too, about Fanel Hall and some other places that you could really – Peter Fanel had a, a racial checkered past and a number of other places. Ted Kennedy he brought up, you know where you're celebrating people who, you know, he was in a car that arguably caused the murder of a, I mean, the death of a young girl, so. No, and, and you know, also complicating that still further is that uh, by all accounts, John Henry has never interfered in the news coverage of the Globe, right. but it's perfectly appropriate as the owner that he and Linda Henry sure. uh, exert some influence over the opinion pages, and they have. So the whole thing becomes kind of awkward. Uh, I've praised Adrian Walker's columns on this before. I've really enjoyed Dan Shaughnessy's columns over the last week because he sought out former Red Sox players who favor the name change, like Tommy Harper, mm -hmm. and who oppose the name change, like um, uh, uh, Jim Lonborg and Reggie Smith. And I thought that they all had really good, interesting, thoughtful things to say about the issue. And uh, I, I recommend those to anybody. And Shirley Young had a, had a good nuanced piece, too. Yep. Was sort of like there was no, no winners or losers here. So. Right. No winners, anyway. No Winner winners. No winners. <laughs> anybody? Yeah, I, look, I think um, this is one of the problems that you have any time you have someone who owns a, a big business in a particular town. It doesn't just happen here in Boston. There are small towns across the country where people own you know, my, minor league teams and also own companies. And, um, and this kind of you know, influence can be pushed on a paper that they own or, or a TV station that they own. I think, you know, Dan, to your point where uh, it's clear that there's no influence over the news coverage, but you know, it's perfectly, you know, okay to, to have some influence over the opinion pages. I've said this before, I think from the public's perspective, that's kind of lost sometimes. Yes. I, I don't know that they fully get, get you know, the difference between the opinion and what is being you know, put or the on the or the, you know, the, or the editorial you know, or what's you know, your lead story. And I think that's why you have to be very careful because what is it that people take away from it that's more important sometimes than you know, But see, one of the things divide. that I was going after here is sort of the, the opinion has sort of run away and the facts are very obscure in this case. I mean, right. you know, it, it, they've even, like, this whole thing with calling Jackie Robinson the N-word, that's been totally refuted. Yet it's one of those things that gets out there with everything else. And so the facts in this are not, 
uh, well, or, or almost irrelevant. I, I, I think you know to get, we're giving John Henry some credit for for influence over the the opinion section. This is also a hot button issue, um, and that's why it's getting the yeah, coverage sure. it's getting. Uh, at, in, in Boston, where we have trouble talking, taking things like race head on, these become proxy issues. Um, so the back and forth takes on that added that added. Um, Aspect and and also, I mean, we'd be we'd be um, remiss if we just didn't point out that um, that this is something that people are are having heated debates about. Um, I think that's why I think that that is a, a fairly honest uh, exchange of ideas on the opinion section of the Globe. Um, and I, and I, I also that the the I believe the Red Sox came out in favor of the name change. So yeah. I mean, in some in some sense that you know if they want to, this to happen, it will. It, there's a little bit of professional wrestling going on here in the arguing about whether or not it's going to happen. So um, with regard to coverage, I've been interested following the back and forth, you know, facts about Yaki and what that meant. And so the, the thing that's been most persuasive for me actually was his support of those schools in the South, which absolutely were for white kids and white kids only. So you take that as you want to. But that is a persuasion for me. But be that as it may, I think that, you know, you can argue about a lot of different things changing, but this has a particular weight in Boston. Carly is right about it standing as a proxy for much, much bigger things. But the Red Sox and Yawkey Way has a different kind of weight from you can name Fanla Hall, any place else. It just has a different weight. And if you want to take the, the high road on this, then John Henry wants to put that, somebody else said it better than me, put that aside behind him, move to a different direction, let's change the name, and, and, and I'm good with it. I also agree with people that say we could use energy in many other arenas and not be focused, and that's correct too. But we cannot ignore the fact that, uh, again, uh, supporting what Carly has said, that this is a big deal because of what it is specifically. And some other place in town will not have the mm -hmm. same weight or the same discussion. Yeah. And we should you know, note that uh, we have yeah. a Yawkey Theater here because we yes. took money from the Yawkey Foundation, a substantial amount.